Okay. All right, so our next topic is free body diagrams. Free body diagrams are these little pictograms, these little pictures that we use to describe all the forces that are acting on an object. Before I go into too much detail about like how to draw these and what they are, I want to talk a little bit about what they are and what they aren't. Okay? So the first thing I want you to understand about free body diagrams is that a free body diagram describes one object in one moment of time. That's why it's called a free body diagram, right? This, the one object, the body, is free of all other contents, right? It's like we've clipped out the background from everything else. It's just this one object. So the first thing to make sure you know is that it shows one object in one moment of time. If I take an object and toss it up, I cannot show you a free body diagram of that entire journey, right? I can have a free body diagram that's the moment I'm tossing this object, or a free body diagram that's like a moment when it's in the air, but it's not going to be a free body diagram of the entire journey, right? <coughs> one object in one moment of time. Likewise, that free body diagram would show you like just the marker, not what my hands are doing, not what anything else around me is doing. So one object, one moment. The next thing that it's important to understand about free body diagrams is they show you what the forces on an object are. So it shows us the forces on an object. That is why we just did forces. Yeah, you're going to use these abbreviations that we just did in just a moment. Shows us the forces acting on an object. Now, because it shows us the forces acting on an object. Sorry. Because it shows us the forces acting on an object, we can use these to tell whether the forces are balanced or unbalanced. And if we remember Newton's first law, Newton's first law is very much about whether objects are balanced or unbalanced. Newton's first law tells us that if objects are balanced, if the forces on an object are balanced, it won't accelerate. And if the forces on an object are unbalanced, it will accelerate. So this shows us, so we can see, if forces are balanced or unbalanced. See if forces are balanced or unbalanced. And if they're balanced, that means we can determine that an object is not accelerating. And if it's unbalanced, that means we can tell that an object is accelerating. Should we capitalize forces every time? You know, I think I'm pretty inconsistent about whether I capitalize forces. Um, that's not something I'm going to be thinking about. So we can see if forces are balanced or if they're unbalanced. So. A free body diagram shows us the forces. We can use those forces to understand something about acceleration. But what a free body diagram does not do is it does not tell us about the velocity. It won't tell us which direction something is moving. It won't tell us how fast something is moving. And that should be making sense by now, because remember, fundamentally speaking, there's not really a difference in physics between an object that's hurtling through space super fast and an object that's perfectly stationary. It all depends on our frame of reference. So this does not tell us about velocity. Now that I've been 
skip through those little caveats. Let me actually show you what these pictures look like. In physics, we have a very particular artistic style that we use when representing objects. So let's say I want to draw a portrait of Audrey. Right? And I'm drawing a portrait of Audrey. I want to make sure I capture you know, this adorable hat and Audrey's cheekbones and chin. And here we go. This is my beautiful portrait of Audrey. It's a box. Maybe I want to do a portrait. Maybe I want to draw the, the beach ball that you're shoving under uh, the pool just to see if you can get it to go down. And you know, you know that's a circular object. Circles can be a little tricky to draw. So we're going to approximate a little bit because you know, physicists have their own particular style. No. So there's my drawing of a beach ball. Oh, yeah, I see it now. You see it? Yeah, it's a beach ball right there. Right? Maybe I want to draw uh, Godzilla as uh, he's wrestling Mothra. Remember, we wouldn't, show, we wouldn't show Mothra because Mothra is a second object. We show one object. So if I'm just drawing Godzilla, then I would make sure that I focus on Godzilla with his head and those you know, spikes down the tail. And here we have my portrait of Godzilla. Okay. Yes, Audrey? When I was younger, I used to destroy things, and then my mom gave me the nickname of Oddzilla. Oddzilla, I love it. <laughs> All right, so whenever we're drawing, we just draw this box. Now, if you want to be a little bit more specific, one of the things we can do is if you know the mass of an object in kilograms, you can write that mass inside this box. So let's say this is actually, uh, Gabby, your water bottle looks like it's about a one liter water bottle. Uh, if that water bottle is full, I would say it has a mass of about one kilogram. So I'm going to write one kg. 32 page. ounces. 32 ounces. Yeah, so 32 ounces is about a liter. And if it's water, a liter of water has a mass of about a kilogram. So I'm going to say it's approximately one kilogram. Um, so this is how I might draw that out. Free body diagram has the box. We write the mass inside the box, if you know it. And then we represent all of the forces acting on this object as arrows. So forces are arrows. So forces drawn as arrows. And what we do here is the stronger the force, the bigger the push or the bigger the pull, the longer the arrow. Should we draw that box? Yeah, you can draw that box. We'll add some arrows to it in a little bit. So stronger forces equal longer arrows. So, bearing in mind you've got this list of forces that we've just talked about. Oh wait, sorry, Yossi, you got a question? we represent as a square. doesn't matter what the object is, we draw it as a square. Uh, Alright, so you have access to this list of forces. What I would like somebody to do, please raise your hand so I can call on you, is look at this list of forces and tell me what is one force that is acting on Gabby's water bottle right now. Tell me a force. We have the normal force. So I have some questions for you. The normal force. Is the normal force pulling on the water bottle or is the normal force pushing on the water pushing, bottle? Pushing. pushing on the water bottle. So I want you to take a moment and say, uh, there's different ways of drawing free body diagrams. The most common method involves just having arrows that go away from the box. I have found that the average middle schooler feels better with free body diagrams if I use, if I like separate between a push and a pull. So I will draw an arrow going towards the box if it's a push and an arrow going away from the box if it's a pull. <laughs> In high school, you will likely see these done slightly differently. This is sort of my beginner entry level that I think aids in understanding, so this is how I do it. So to draw a force, in which direction is the normal force pushing on the bottle? Up. Uh. Uh, so I, I see your hand, Emily, I'll be up. So I'm going to draw an arrow going up like this towards the water bottle. That's the normal force pushing up. And I'm going to label it with the abbreviation for the normal force. So raise your hand if you can tell me what's the abbreviation for the normal force. Raphael. Yeah, FN. So capital F for force, capital N. So I've labeled that error. Raise your hand if you can tell me a second force acting on this water bottle. Emily. Gravity. 
Gravity. Now, is gravity pushing or pulling on pulling. this thing? Pushing, pushing. Pulling. Pulling. It's a pull. Gravity pulls us. Right? It's a force that pulls objects towards the nearest biggest thing. Which direction does gravity pull that water bottle? Down. Or to the nearest biggest thing. Now, here's my, yeah, which happens to the earth when we face that water bottle? Here's my question. The length of the arrow represents the strength of the force. Right now, look at that water bottle. Is it currently accelerating? No. No. It's not accelerating. So if it's not accelerating, if it's not accelerating, that means the force would have to be balanced. So how strong is gravity relative to the normal force? The same. Exactly the same. Remember, raise your hand if we're answering questions. So I'm going to draw an arrow that's going down away from the box. Because gravity is a pull. And I drew it exactly the same length as my normal force arrow to show that these two forces are balancing each other. This is a free body diagram. It shows the forces. I can look at this and I can see that the forces are balanced. Now, one of the things, this is gonna be a little bit getting ahead of myself, but I'm gonna give you just a tiny preview. A thing I love about free body diagrams is it's like you have this little bit of information and you start using that little bit of information to find out more. So I happen to have a skill under my belt. I haven't taught this yet to you, but I know if I'm on Earth and I know an object's mass, I know that mass and weight are directly correlated. And I know what the uh, constant of proportionality is between mass and weight. Have you all talk about constants of proportionality in math class? Yeah. yeah, I know what that number is. And so I'm, I happen to know that if an object has a mass of one kilogram, it's going to have a weight of 9.8 newtons. 9.8 is about 10, so I'm just going to write 10 newtons to make my life easier. So my force of gravity is about 10 newtons. Can I write 9.8? You can write 9.8 newtons. Uh, newtons, by the way, capital N, is an abbreviation for the unit of force. So the unit of force is newtons in the same way the unit of mass is kilograms. Hey, here's a question. If the force of gravity is 10 newtons, how strong does the normal force have to be? 10 newtons. Also 10 newtons. So a thing that free body diagrams let me do is it lets me look at this and be like, oh, okay, I know the mass and I know I'm on Earth. So that means I know the force of gravity. And I know that this is balanced because it's not accelerating. So that means I also know the normal force. So a lot of free body diagrams is going to be knowing one piece of information and using that to find other things. It's like you're building a puzzle. There's this jigsaw puzzle that I'm like creating all the pieces, knowing how to make them match up. All right, let's do another free body diagram. I'm gonna do a free body diagram of those fan carts that we were dealing with uh, yesterday and the day before. So how am I gonna draw a fan cart? A box. Yes, remember to raise your hand. Yes, a box! I'm going to draw it as a square. Do, 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 do. Um, happens to be the case in that uh, activity we were doing yesterday, the uh, fan cart had a mass of one kilogram. Or do we want to have any objects on this fan cart? Yes. No. What object do you want on the fan cart oh. working? A refrigerator. Okay, we're <laughs> one of the ones from the simulation. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, soda bottle, soda. Right, the soda bottle. So the soda bottle had a mass of two kilograms, the cart had a mass of one kilogram. That's really so this weird. object is a total of three kilograms that we're dealing with. Okay. Raise your hand if you can tell me one of the forces that is acting on the fan cart that we looked at yesterday. Chef. Friction. Friction. So the carts were going this way. We know that friction opposes motion. So which direction is the friction going? That way. That way. Absolutely. So I'm going to draw this arrow. The friction is pushing back against this object. So I've got this arrow going towards it. And I'm going to label it F. F. That's one force. I don't know exactly how strong the force of friction is. I don't have enough information yet to figure that out. Raphael, can you give me a different force? Or do you have a question? Give me a different force. We're going to have the applied force. The fan is a perfect example of an applied force. Now let me ask you a question. Raphael, do you think the fan was a stronger force or do you think friction was a stronger force? You have a fan. 
Was the cart accelerating? Was it speeding up? It was speeding up. So friction was trying to slow it down, and it wasn't succeeding. So we must have had a stronger applied force than force of friction. So I'm going to draw this arrow longer than the friction arrow. What other forces were on that fan cart? Yeah? Gravity. Gravity! Which direction is gravity going to be going? Um, yeah, pulling down. So it's a force that's pulling down. I'm just going to make it pretty big. It's so good. It's so good. It's force of gravity. You've got force of gravity pulling this object down. And I happen to know, because I know this thing about the concept of proportionality that relates mass and weight. I know that we're on Earth. I know Newton's second law, which I haven't taught you all yet. I know that this force of gravity is going to be about 30 uh, newtons. Technically, it's like 29.6 newtons, because the concept of proportionality is 9.8, not uh, 10. But I'm going to round that and say 30 newtons. Are there any other forces? Acting on this fan cart. Lisa? Normal force? Yeah, we got the normal force because it's sitting on a surface. Which direction is the normal force going? Yossi? Uh, and it's the same, it has the same force, um, just opposite of that. Yeah, it's going up and it's equally strong as gravity. So I'm going to draw those arrows as being the same length so that I can visually see hey, these forces are balanced. Yesha? Yeah, sure. Uh, so what I did with the soda is this object, what this box represents, is the, the cart with the soda on. Oh. So the soda is here in that three kilograms, because the cart alone was one kilogram, the soda was another two kilograms. So in total we had three kilograms okay. of mass, with the soda we which know. impacted how strong the force of gravity is. So that's 30 newtons. Uh, how strong is my, for is my normal force? 30 newtons. Yeah. yeah, also 30 newtons. Okay, so this is a free body diagram for that fan card. I'm going to ask you questions. Remember, a free body diagram is one object at one moment in time. I'm going to change the moon. We're going to change this free body diagram as a result. Um, what would be different about this? Let's say this is the fan on medium. What would be different if I set the fan to high? The arrow would be longer because the force is stronger. Yeah, the force becomes stronger, so my applied force arrow would be longer. I set the fan to high instead of medium, that arrow gets longer. What would be different? Let's say this is the this is it on metal. What would be different if I changed the surface to wood, which has more friction than? Yeah, Lisa. Uh, the arrow for friction would be longer. Yeah, remember the wood surface was the was the bigger friction surface that we dealt with, so that arrow would be longer. Okay. What would happen if we paused that simulation, we turned the fan off entirely, so now there's no fan? What would be, be what would be different about this uh, ship? Um, the, the FA would go down. Yeah, and in fact, if we turn the fan all the way off, go all the way down. it goes all the way down. Wait, oh. no, no, no. Oh, no. You're upset. No, no, no. I see why you're upset. Hey, hey, Lisa. <laughs> When we turned off the fan, which direction was the cart moving? This way. Cart's going this way. What direction are the forces? <laughs> forces going this way. You remember what when I said, right? hey, this does not tell us about velocity. This does not tell us which direction something is moving. In this scenario, this fan cart is still moving that direction, but the force is that way which means the acceleration is that way. What does it mean when your acceleration is the opposite direction of your velocity? What are you doing? You're yeah? slowing down. You're slowing down. All right, that's it for today, y'all. You did amazing. Thank you so much. I know this was a huge lesson. Really appreciate it. I will see you tomorrow.